Hello everyone. Today, we're diving into new information about smallpox. This time, I've decided to talk to you about the virus responsible for this deadly disease. Before we get started, if you haven't subscribed yet, I invite you to do so and follow me on my other social media platforms. Smallpox is one of the deadliest diseases humanity has ever faced. It is a highly contagious and epidemic viral infection caused by a pox virus from the Poxviridae family, a group of double-stranded DNA viruses. Smallpox, also known as variola or smallpox in English, was historically distinguished from syphilis, which was called great pox, even though the two diseases have no etiological connection. The smallpox virus is a large, typically oval-shaped virus, measuring around 200 nanometers in diameter and 300 nanometers in length. The word smallpox comes from the Latin variola, meaning little pustule, referring to the many pustules that appear on the bodies of infected individuals. Its history dates back to around 10,000 BC. Based on current knowledge, it first emerged in northeastern Africa and China, and then evolved from animal viruses to adapt to humans. This contagious disease likely struck Europe multiple times before the 15th century, but it wasn't until the 17th century that the epidemic reached unprecedented proportions, decimating at least 10% of the population, according to some estimates. While the plague is often seen as more terrifying, smallpox was actually deadlier, with an average mortality rate of 4-5% to among affected populations. To combat it, a technique known as variolation was introduced in Europe in the early 18th century, thanks to Lady Montagu. This method, inspired by Chinese practices, involved intentionally inoculating a mild form of smallpox, as it was observed that those who survived the disease did not contract it again. However, this method carried risks, with a mortality rate of up to 1-2%. In 1798, a major breakthrough occurred with the introduction of vaccination by English physician Edward Jenner. He published the results of his experiment, in which he performed the first official vaccination on an eight-year-old boy, demonstrating cross-immunity with the cowpox virus. Edward Jenner empirically proved that the bovine cowpox virus could prevent human smallpox. He noticed that dairy workers who contracted cowpox a common disease among cows, seemed resistant to the devastating smallpox epidemics. Thus, instead of inoculating human smallpox, the cowpox virus began to be used. This vaccine proved highly effective, leading to the global eradication of the disease. In 1967, the WHO launched an intensive smallpox eradication program, which lasted 10 years. This program was successful, with the last case of natural smallpox detected on October 26, 1977, in Somalia. Then, on October 29, 1979, the WHO officially declared that smallpox had been eradicated from the earth, marking the end of vaccination against this disease on May 8, 1980. On June 30, 1999, the WHO set a deadline for the total destruction of all virus stocks, considering that their preservation posed a risk in the event of malicious use, potentially triggering a pandemic. Today, only a few samples of the virus are kept for research purposes in WHO-authorized laboratories, primarily in the United States and Russia. However, the threat of bioterrorism remains a major concern. Hox viruses are widespread in the animal kingdom, and three other types of this virus can also infect humans monkeypox, cowpox, and vaccinia, all of which cause skin lesions. However, only the human smallpox virus is easily transmissible from person to person and has caused devastating epidemics. Contamination with the smallpox virus typically occurs through direct and close contact with nasopharyngeal secretions, though, less commonly, it can result from contact with skin lesions, including scabs. These viruses exist in an enveloped form that limits their penetration, making indirect transmission less common. However, 
there have been rare reports of contamination through contact with contaminated objects in the environment. Intentional contamination through an aerosol of the virus inhaled by the population remains a possible threat. The progression of the disease follows several stages. First, contamination, then an incubation period of 8 to 12 days, followed by the pre-eruptive or invasion phase, which lasts 2 to 4 days. This phase is marked by severe infectious symptoms such as high fever, intense chills, vomiting, delirium, and a significantly altered general condition, accompanied by a transient rash. It is after the pre-eruptive phase that the skin eruption manifests, usually between two and four days. It begins with the appearance of macules, which are lesions that change the skin color, often to red or pink. Next, papules appear, which are visible and palpable lesions, followed by vesicles, which are translucent lesions caused by small cavities forming under the skin. Finally, pustules develop, similar to papules but containing pus. These lesions eventually turn into scabs. These scabs can affect the mucous membranes of the mouth, the skin, as well as the respiratory tract, and sometimes the cornea, potentially leading to blindness. The rash evolves in a single centrifugal outbreak, potentially reaching the palms of the hands and soles of the feet, while relatively sparing the chest, thighs, and abdomen. This characteristic differentiates smallpox from chickenpox, which concentrates more on the chest and evolves in multiple outbreaks. The issue arises when the lesions turn into scabs, as they leave permanent scars, often on the face, giving a lifelong marked appearance, even after recovery. Diagnosis is primarily based on clinical examination, relying on the characteristics of the eruptions and the epidemiological context. Biological confirmation can be made by direct detection of the virus in the vesicle fluid or scabs using electron microscopy with staining or by antigen detection through immunofluorescence. PCR can also be used, particularly for differential diagnosis, distinguishing smallpox from severe chickenpox, which may cause similar skin lesions. To date, there is no curative treatment for smallpox, Current treatments are symptomatic, aiming to reduce complications and secondary infections, such as hemorrhages or gangrene. Antiviral medications, like tecavirimat, sidafolvir, and brinsidofavir, are sometimes used to prevent the disease's progression. Tecavirimat was approved by the FDA in 2018, becoming the first authorized treatment for smallpox. It was later approved by the European Medicines Agency on January 6, 2022, to treat monkeypox. The World Health Organization issued a significant health alert this week, activating its highest level of international alert. This alert concerns a disease recently renamed Mpox or monkeypox, which has rapidly spread across parts of Africa. Currently, the most affected regions have a particularly high incidence among infants and children. Monkeypox, now designated as Mpox, has become more contagious with the emergence of a new variant, which is more transmissible and more dangerous, raising global concerns. The risk of continued spread within Africa and beyond is very concerning. It is clear that a coordinated international response is essential to stop this epidemic and save lives. In response to this crisis, the World Health Organization has launched an appeal for donations to fund a plan to combat the epidemic, with a target of $15 and million. Since the beginning of the year, over 17,040 cases have been reported in Africa, with 500 people losing their lives. The Democratic Republic of Congo is the hardest hit country. Concerns are growing regarding the isolation of infected individuals, as this could lead them to hide and avoid healthcare facilities, further exacerbating the spread of the virus. The virus has now crossed Congo's borders, affecting 16 countries, including Rwanda and Burundi. Experts warn that authorities must prepare for new cases. The situation could spread to neighboring countries, with potential risks from certain travelers. 
it is crucial to remain extremely vigilant and closely monitor the situation. In 2022, Belgium recorded 800 cases of monkeypox, primarily within the gay community. Today, heterosexuals are also at risk. At that time, vaccination proved effective, but it remains to be seen if the vaccine will be as effective against the new variants. This international alert may bring back unsettling memories. However, it is important to put things into perspective. There are significant differences compared to the COVID-19 alert in 2020. In 2020, we were dealing with a new virus, SARS-CoV-2, with limited knowledge and many uncertainties. In contrast, the mpox virus has been known since 1958, when it was first identified in monkeys in Denmark, hence its original name. However, it primarily spreads through rodents and humans. Mpox was first detected in Africa in 1970, giving us a stronger knowledge base. Additionally, we now have two recent vaccines adapted to this virus. The transmission of Mpox also differs from that of COVID. Unlike COVID, which primarily spread through airborne transmission, Mpox spreads through direct contact and sexual relations. While the virus only became a concern in Belgium in July 2022, prompting a targeted vaccination campaign, it now also affects heterosexual transmissions. This maximum international alert aims to raise awareness of a very painful and potentially deadly disease that unfortunately only gained attention once it spread beyond Africa. The rapid spread of the new variant, recently reported in Sweden, and the need for international mobilization to secure support and assistance are key factors behind this alert. Belgium has taken the initiative to offer a donation of 215,000 vaccine doses to the African Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Thank you for your attention.